Welcome to The Leader Equation, everybody. We are live with two really important guests today. But first and foremost, I am Lindsay Soprani. I'm the owner of Roundtable Real Estate Services and Soprani Consulting. And I have my lovely co-host, Christy Bell Grossman, who is the owner of Ops Boss Coaching and does all things operations boss-like. So <laughs> we're up for that. Um, so like I said, we have an amazing, we have amazing guests today. We have an amazing duo is what I'm going to say. Uh, we got Sarah Reynolds and her director of operations, Jen Wade. Say hi, guys. Hi. So together, this duo and their team will exceed 10 million in GCI this year. It's amazing. And then they're going to serve anywhere from 800 to 850 or more families this year. So we are super excited to have them. And I'm going to chuck it over to Christy to take us through our, our quick fire questions. Awesome. So welcome to episode two of The Leader Equation. So we are going to talk about all things leader, entrepreneur, relationship related. So we're chatting with owners, founders, CEOs, ops bosses, um, both inside and outside real estate. So we've got art, we've got science, what works, what doesn't, do unicorns exist, or are they just a figment of your imagination? How do entrepreneurs find the one and how does the one choose their visionary? So we have endless questions for you guys, but first we want to um, go through our quick fire questions so our audience can get to know who you are because you guys are amazing. And then we're gonna dive into the real meat of the leader equation. So if you guys would each introduce yourself, tell us your name and your title and how long you've been in business together. So I'm Sarah Reynolds. I'm Jen Wade. And we've been working together now uh, four and a half years. Yeah. And your role's on the team? I'm the CEO and she's the COO. Awesome. Okay, year one profit for the Reynolds team? Two tw well, for the Reynolds team or when we started working together? Oh, okay, when you started working together. When we started working together, it was uh, 222. Awesome. 222. And then last year's profit? Uh, right under 1.6 million. Okay, did you guys hear that? 1.6 million, that's phenomenal. How many people on your team? So last year or this year? Currently. Currently, we are at um, 76. 76, if you yeah. count our amazing VA team that helps us too. Oh, absolutely, we count yeah. them. Okay, yeah. so each of you, what is really quickly your morning routine? <laughs> Um, I wake she has up the early. best morning routine. <laughs> Go for it, Jen. Let's hear it. <laughs> I'm a two month old, so I love my morning yeah, routine. Yeah, right now. Um, I get up really early. It depends on the day, um, but I drink coffee and I start working immediately. Mm. Um, I go through um, our appointments from the previous day and see what's happened on those and launch correct plans. And then I go work out typically and then get ready and come into the office. What time do you get up? Um, it depends on the day. I go to a class. So if I have a workout class and um, those days I get up at 345 in the morning. Holy wow. I knew that because you messaged me at 415 this morning. Awesome. Sarah, what's your morning routine quick? <laughs> so... My morning routine is like pre-baby, like when I'm not, when I don't have a newborn. Okay. Right now it's like feed the newborn. Like as soon as the baby wakes up. Okay. Um, Unreal. Yes. Uh, drink, drink coffee. Mm -hmm. We're both big coffee drinkers. Yes. Um, I do uh, typically read my Bible and pray and like um, think about the day. And then I get everything set up for our morning huddle. Uh, that I lead. So I look at the numbers that I'm about to share with the team. And then I always, on the morning huddles, I share something like inspirational or like a Reynolds team core value. So I think about that a lot in the mornings uh, to get ready for that. Cool. What book impacted you most? So I, I think overall, like it, that was a hard question, but overall, uh, Good to, good to great is really has been like a big impact on me as, just from the very beginning as a young business um, to where we are today. And then Jen and I both agree that traction has yeah. impacted us both. Yeah. So traction for you, Jen? Yes. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. Two last questions. How many streams of income do each of you have? I have three. I have five. And what's your superpower? You can either say your own superpower or what the other person's superpower is. <laughs> we'll say what each other's are. Yes. I think. <laughs> yes. 
So Sarah's is, um, she has it, I mean, she has many, but I would say her top ones are just bringing out the best in people. Um, and also like telling the future, I would say, or just, she knows how to, I don't know, guide our business and she can, I feel like she can predict the future. I love that. That's interesting because that was one that was said on episode one. I know. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. What's Jen's superpower? I was trying to find that legit like superpower name for this, <laughs> like, <laughs> but I couldn't find it. But basically like she has a calmness about her that is like amazing. Like a calm under extreme pressure. Like if you look at the growth of our business in the last four and a half years, and she has been the leader of that, she has stayed calm throughout, throughout, throughout the whole thing. <laughs> and so she's really like calm under extreme, extreme pressure and knowing sort of what to do from there is really her superpower. I love that with 76 people that comes in handy. So <laughs> with that, the leader equation, we're going to talk about what adds to the leadership formula, what subtracts, what divides, and how the people listening can multiply their results. And I'm gonna to toss it back to Lindsay so we can dive into the real meat of the conversation. Yeah, what I love is that we already have questions coming up, which is so fun. So we'll get to those at some point. Um, awesome. Just keep putting them in there and I will get to them, guys. All right, so for everybody listening, give us a brief description of how you guys came together. Like, what did that look like? Did you know each other ahead of time? How did that happen? Well, I was an agent on the team. And then, um, but what about before you were an agent? Before I was an agent, well, I was an agent on a different team. I kind of a team. Um, and then she was really big in my neighborhood. Like mm -hmm. she was, I saw her signs everywhere and I was just like a part-time agent at that time. So when I was really getting into it full time, I reached out to her and, um, wanted to join our team. We went to Starbucks. Yes. Yeah. We <laughs> met at a Starbucks and hit it off immediately. And I joined the team right after. So, she so yeah. mm -hmm. yes. 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 Which has been huge for her role today, in my opinion, like huge, huge. Um, and so she was an agent for about a year. Yeah, right? a little over a year on the team. Yeah. And then our, my original director of ops, who was with me for five years, her plan was always when she got pregnant with her second baby, she would stay home. So I knew when she announced that she was pregnant, what was coming, <laughs> even though I was, at, at the time I was praying, you know, for that to be different. Um, but of course, God had a bigger plan. Um, and so I announced to the team saying, hey, you know, Katie's stepping uh, 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 no, go, staying at home, taking a sabbatical. I still say she's on a sabbatical, um, but she's taking a sabbatical and then she's going to be, uh, if this opportunity has arisen on our team, if you know of anyone. So I was really taken back that night. I think Jen sent me an night, email yeah. Yeah. saying that she wants to apply. And I was like, at the time she was actually our number one agent. During, was, so you're the date. Yeah. yeah. She was really ramping up and yeah. So then we have to ask you, because I already got the question popping up, disc profile, Jen. Yes, I have high S, high C. Okay, so Very just common in sales still with the calmness and wonderfulness of you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, it's a unique, unique <laughs> for a sales agent, but yeah, I was, um, yeah, I'm a high S, high C. We actually have great success with high we S, do. high C agents. Yeah. I was just going to say that's interesting because we were having a conversation about that at the class I was teaching this week. And what I've seen a lot of, and Lindsay, you can probably chime in on this too, is in the medium, the small to medium sized teams, I'm seeing the SCs. And then the larger the team grows, I'm seeing a lot more DCs. So I love hearing that you're an SC because there's a lot of people probably listening to this yeah. that can watch your leadership path and grow into that as an SC or a CS. Yeah, yeah, definitely. No, we've had great, I mean, still our, our number two agent for the last two years is a high SIC. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. So, I mean, so how does that look in terms of leadership, um, Jen? I'm sort of preempting your questions, Lindsay, but it, it just makes me think, um, because typically when you have two leaders of a large organization like that, there's a lot more D in. Like, what does that communication look like between the two of you guys? I mean, I think it actually works in the best parts that with our profiles. Yeah. 
Yeah, we just complement each other. I think I, what Sarah might lack in, I take over, and definitely what I lack in, she takes over. So we just really complement each other. And I think one hard thing that a lot of times a disc, uh, on the Abelson report, it does rank like sense of urgency. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But I have a high, extreme high sense of urgency, yeah. okay? Um, and I'm a big be believer, like speed of the leader, speed of the pack. Um, so it's my job to like keep us up and going. Um, and but one thing that's great is like she matches my sense of urgency that's like even though she's a sc we have a very similar like i i can say something and i know that it will get done and it will get done in in the right time frame and yeah and i don't even have to worry about it and so i yeah. think that that's been a big thing is like I love that distinction that's yeah. a great distinction for rainmakers out there because i hear that comment a lot i want someone who can move fast yes. but they also need someone who will balance them exactly. yes yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. And you know, a lot of agents that are probably listening right now um, are thinking, well, I'd be afraid to put her into an ops position and to give her all that because she's going to see the checks that come in and they're going to be high. She's going to want to go back to sales. Did you guys have any of that happening at all? Or do you think about that at all? No, I don't think about that. Um, yeah, that doesn't, that's never actually crossed my mind. Um, so what about the position was like, what drew you in? Like what? Because obviously it's not money, right? Yeah. No, it wasn't money. Well, she makes good money. I do. Yes. yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. I mean, she helped me build this thing. So I, yes. yeah. 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 But that wasn't why. Yeah. I the no. Exactly. No. Yeah. It wasn't. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's probably why that doesn't ever mm -hmm. affect me when I look at the numbers because I am valued here. Yeah. And, you know, because at the end of the day, you know, salespeople, we always say it's unlimited earnings, right? You have the unlimited potential. And so, you know, I, and, and I hear that. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. And, and I think, ops, you know what, that's actually a good thing. Let's talk about that because there are a lot of people that also will not pay for good operations people. Well, I think, to be honest, yeah. I mean, it's, it's like when you take like a marriage conference course or whatever, and they're like, if ever, it's not 50, 50, everyone needs to give a hundred percent, you know, in a, in a marriage. And so like, this is like a work marriage. <laughs> and so like the thing about both of us is that we give this a hundred percent. And when, when that happens, the growth has, I mean, we've taken off right in the last four and a half years together. Yeah. And so because of that, we have been able to add other streams of income, like a title company and other that she's part of. And like, and when you first, when you show your value as an ops boss, as Jen has, like any type of leader is going to look at that and say like, wow, like I want to keep that person <laughs> for a long, long time uh, because we can yeah. do even more together. Yeah, exactly. And so I think if, I think it's a limiting belief to think that ops can't be unlimited income in terms of, cause if you, if you really give it your hundred percent, I think it exactly. definitely can be in, in the end. Yeah. So yeah. You're going to get so many emails. It's gonna be I know fun. you guys, if you like that, let me see the hearts on there. Cause I think that was a really, really important point. Yeah. Um, Jen, what was it that attracted you? We often get from the rainmaker, like I'm looking for someone like Jen, what was it that attracted you to Sarah? Um, and why have you stayed with her so long? Well, she is, I mean, she, first of all, she's just an amazing person. And you know that, like, mm -hmm. she cares about you and you, you genuinely feel that um, all the time. So that is probably the main reason why I stay with her. Um, but everything else, she brings out the best in me. She makes, she pushes me. She makes me... You know, I've grown so much. I know, but do a podcast and you can get out of my comfort zone. <laughs> but, um, yeah, the she, wizard had to come out from behind the screen today. Exactly. Yeah, so that's definitely way out of my comfort zone. But I mean, I would never be in this position. She would never, I mean, she always just, I mean, I'm always growing. I just, the, since I've been in this position, I mean, I just, I'm a, I feel like I, I'm a different person. I just am constantly growing, which is amazing. Um, yeah. And Sarah, why is Jen your one? Like she, you've been together how many years now? Five? Yeah, almost five. That's a really long time in operations world. Yeah. So why is she, what is it about her that I know we know she has calmness, but what else? Why is she your partner? Because I think you guys operate as partners very much. Or honestly, it's trust. Mm. Like I have like I trust her 
like a hundred percent with, she has my back constantly. We, we think alike culturally for our team. So a big yes. part of our team is like a strong culture and that's how we cut people. And what's really important for me with any leader in the Reynolds team organization is that they match our care for our people. Um, and I know that if some, if I'm out having a baby and something needs to be addressed with someone, a fierce conversation needs to be had or something needs to be addressed or, um, a problem handled, she's going to handle it almost identical to the way I would handle it to where people know they're cared about, but at the same time, there's some type of accountability that goes with it. And so I think a lot of it has to do with, uh, we're just, we don't talk that actually as much as you would think we are. like, yeah. we are hundred percent partners, but we almost run at the same this like we think alike like it's yeah. so funny like uh two nights ago she sent me a text and was like um said this is what your your first book should be the title of your first book she sent me and I said oh my gosh I was like you're that's so weird because I literally have been thinking about I've never thought about writing a book but just this week I started thinking maybe I'm gonna write a book and then she texted me this is the title of your first book it's like we're I don't I can't yeah. explain it so we're, how long did it take to get to that point so you had a year on the team before you were in the role. Did you step into the role with that trust because of the year on the team or did it still take time to develop? It developed. Yeah. Um, yeah, it definitely developed. It, it developed for me in terms of too, like letting her, seeing the way that she handles things and, and asking her, what are your thoughts on this? And, you know, t talking it through. And of course it, it develops and gets stronger as time goes. So Sarah, what advice would you give? Sorry, Lindsay, I have so many questions around this because I get these questions on coaching calls all the time. What advice would you give Rainmakers listening today for how to develop that trust? And then I want the reverse question too. What advice would you guys give to the director of operations that wants that trust but hasn't bridged that earning the trust gap yet? I think as a Rainmaker, like first of all, you have to give them the time to shine, like meaning like a lot of times because we have so high senses of urgency, we many times will step in and not let them do what we're asking them to do. Mm -hmm. um, and so you've got to give them the time to show you that they can do that or that they're thinking that and then ask questions. I think I would ask her a lot of questions in the beginning of like, well, how are you going to handle this with this person? What are you going to say? Mm -hmm. And, you know, and so because of that, I think that that it, I was like, okay, that's exactly how I would handle it. And so she started earning my trust as sort of we went on. Yeah. Was there ever a time though, when like Jen made a decision and it was like, oh, that's not the one I would have done. And if so, what did you guys do to correct that? Like, what was that conversation? Maybe not. Um, I'm sure it's happened. We actually had a question that came in. What does a hard convo look like between you? Have you had any hard convos? So I've, I've said some things I shouldn't have. And <laughs> I think that's real. In my high D, high I way. Okay. And so there's been two, we were talking about that this morning, actually. Yeah. Like there's been two times where I've had to apologize because I've put my foot in my mouth and said, so. but other than that, there's, we haven't. I think that's real. So I actually had written that down. This wasn't on the questions we gave you ahead of time of one of my own questions was, have you guys ever had that divorce moment and how do you come back from that? Mm -hmm. Like maybe you're thinking like, oh my God, I'm so upset with her and I know I did something really wrong that I shouldn't have done. Like, how do you come back from that? Because I think a lot of people get to that point and the profile of a director of operations often is the quiet person who may not say how hurt they are and they're not sure how to handle that. Like, what does that look like for you guys? Mm -hmm. Well, so I do think, I mean, it would, they really weren't like awful things that she said, <laughs> like the way she said it, but any, like the one time she said something and I responded like, but she has a high emotional EQ. So she knew immediately, like I didn't have to say directly that that it bothered me. I just had to say, I don't even know what I really said, but you knew immediately, oh. she knew immediately that it bothered me and apologized. Like, and then it squashed, like, it, that was it, you know? Yeah. But we've never had a divorce conversation. No, no. Yeah, and she's constantly telling me we're not getting divorced, which I need to hear sometimes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <We're not. laughs> I love it. And I love that you guys have that. I mean, that just goes to show you the synergy that's happening there. And that's why you guys are super successful, which I love. We did ask you to consider, was there a challenge of sorts that you guys went through in the beginning as you came together? Do you remember, like, 
having something that was like, oh, this is, this is hard for us to work through. And it doesn't even have to be between the two of you. It could have been an outside situation that you had to deal with and just figuring out like, how do we get through this together? And what does that look like? <laughs> well, uh, yeah. we, we had someone selling drugs out of our office. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> So and, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and making videos without clothes on. No. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> seen, yeah. I guess with a team of 76, you see it all. Yeah, we've seen it. We've seen really? quite a bit. And, and that was probably, I would say, the heart. What, it all went down the same day my dad and my grandparents got into an almost, they almost died a car accident that took, yeah. they're still recovering from that car accident. That was how many years ago oh now? Gosh, three, three years ago. Yeah. Um, um, that was probably the hardest thing that we've had to get through together and take the team through together yeah. and not lose anybody. And uh, because it was definitely an influencing thing. Yeah. Um, so I would say that that was probably the hardest. That was the hardest. The hardest thing. Mm -hmm. um, what did you learn from going through that? I know. So I told you we'd send you all the questions ahead of time. Sorry. No, that's okay. <laughs> that we learned was how important our culture is. Mm. And the biggest I the biggest thing I learned is is leadership has to be proven mm -hmm. before hiring it before hiring in. And the best leaders in my organization have come from within. So like making sure that someone proves themselves first, because I made some mistakes there, um, was probably the biggest thing I learned through through all of that. Yeah. I love that. I do too. And if you guys, you know, when you really think back on your four years going into five, you know, how have you guys changed and grown together? Like, what has that kind of looked like? And do you feel like your team is really like, like now it's like, okay, everything's working because we've gelled and we're, you know, speed of the leader. Everybody's put that up when you were commenting about it. Like walk me through how you've changed. Hmm. How we've changed. How have you grown together? Like what has your growth path as leaders together? You made, I love the comment that you made that you're both operating like this together. It makes me think of like when you go dog sledding, right? Mm -hmm. there, there's all the two dogs together. You go a lot faster. So what is the growth? I think we, I think we know each other. I mean, I think we've grown in, in our no knowledge of each other. So like, I feel like lately we've been able to say almost exactly what each other needs to hear. At least I feel that way about yeah. Jen to me. Yeah. <laughs> um, like when I is. came back from maternity leave and I was like, I had so much clarity because I was stepping back of what my role should be and where I need to be focused on. And she just looked at me and said, yeah, cause I got this. Like, like go yeah. do that because you like, you're basically not needed here. No. <laughs> you're not, you're, go you're do needed. that. Yeah. You what you, yeah. Yeah. And what, you what I need to be focused on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we should probably ask you guys, I would think Christy, don't you think to really like, what are your focuses? So like, Jen, do you meet with the agents at all? Do you like do four one ones or is that all Sarah? What does that look like on your team? Yeah. We is did get awesome? that question in the group yesterday. Like kind of what is your 20% for each of you? Mm -hmm. So mine, so I am definitely a mixed role. I do deal with agents, but more on the accountability and that we do that a lot through our system, through our CRM. Um, so I'm really in there making sure everybody's following up and I am there for agents on questions. Like I'll get multiple calls a day, a night from agents on questions. Um, but as far as meeting them face to face, I used to some agents, but now I'm more focused on the operations and the accountability in the system. So she puts eyes on every single person we meet with, and which is, depending on the week, anywhere between 50 to 100 families. Wow. In our, in our system. And then she makes sure that they're not, that they don't, their ball, the ball's not dropped on them. Um, and so that's like a big part of her role, which isn't te technically operations like I me mean, it is operations but i'm saying it's, operations. it's not it's not meeting accountability we're we're highly accountable in our system mm -hmm. if that makes sense yeah and overseeing it to make sure that the things are happening that are supposed, supposed to happen i love that i think you guys have had to evolve to that accountability in your systems because of the scale 
Yes. You can do it the other way at a smaller level, but at this level, you have to use leverage your systems much more. Yeah. Yes, definitely. Yep. What does your accountability look like with each other and your communication? And how often are you, you said like, we're not talking together as much. Like, do you have regular weekly meetings? Do you text? Do you hold each other mutually accountable or is it a one-way accountability? What does that look like? So we have our leadership meeting with our entire leadership team every Monday. Um, and then we have a one-on-one. -on -one. Well, every one to two weeks, but our offices are right next to each other. So like this do. is the door to her office, yeah, it's right here. which is right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> to get to my office, they have to go through that office. Yeah. Um, so, but we're constantly texting, slacking, we slack on the team. Um, so slacking each other. Yeah, we're always in communication. Um, Walk us through how do you make sure so like say you have an agent that comes to you, Jen, and they are upset about something. Does that get clearly communicated to Sarah or you handle it and it's your thing and it's your baby and you guys don't even worry about passing that back and forth. I try to handle it. Mm -hmm. um, Which has been I huge, do. by the way. Like, yes. I, I don't know about half the stuff that goes yeah. on around here, and it's good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's really good. Like, that's yeah. been one thing that has been such a game changer with her, with me. Is like, I don't, she doesn't, she, the, she keeps very limited unless she knows that I need to know mm -hmm. about it. I typically don't know about it. Yeah. So. What is something you'd need to know about? Mm. Mm. Um, it depends on if it's a certain agents, I definitely um, bring that to her attention. Um, and then also if it's anything culturally or that she might need to be aware of, I let her know. Okay. But all the little, little problems I just try to handle. Let's, can I, I want to dive in a little bit deeper there on the culture thing, because I know about your team. I know Sarah before I knew Sarah from the people on your team talking about how awesome it is to be on your team. And I don't hear that a lot around the country. I think it's really, really unusual. And I will tell you, I was driving to lunch with my husband in my car this morning. And he said, if I ever get my license, I'm going to be on the Reynolds team. Oh, that's awesome. so I would like to know on the leadership. We are side, <laughs> I'll, I'll let him know. He works for a church right now. Um, I'll let him know. But on the leadership side, like what is the leadership's role in culture? How was your culture developed and how is it maintained? Like it just talk to me a little bit about that because we're talking about the leadership equation here. Like, what does that look like on your team? So, I mean, first and foremost, as a, it's all about ser serving those that you lead. I mean, that that's mm -hmm. the foundation of our, you cannot be a leader on our team if you don't first show that you will serve. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you must. And, and the way that I view servant leadership is first by making sure that all of our team is set up by providing value to those that we lead. So like, for example, I see a lot of teams that come together and I, they, they want to hire agents and things like that, but then they have no value that they're providing the agent. Um, and all they talk about is the database that the agent's bringing them, which is very, to me, that's very one-sided. So you have two choices. You can provide value or you can extract value, right? And so as the leader, your job is to provide value. And so I think that that, you have to first have that as the foundation of the culture. And I think that that has been the foundation of our culture. And that's why a lot of people stay uh, for that reason, I would say. Um, m maintaining it is the, tr is the harder part. Especially when you're growing. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's hard, um, but it's always just, well, it's leading by example. It, it's constantly, we're constantly talking about our values and how important our culture is. If we see an issue, we address it immediately. Um, Transparency, I would say. Like, yes. I, I'm very, like, real with the team. Like I will tell them if I'm struggling with something or if I'm, or what, like what's going on with me personally, I'm very transparent with them. And so then I want them to obviously be transparent with, with us. Um, but just making sure that we're, 
being who we really are and then talking yeah. it through with them being able to say I'm sorry you know yeah. and admit when we mess up because we yeah. have messed up a lot yeah and every and that's also like everybody I do feel like everybody on our team knows they can mess up and it's not like mm-hmm. you're in trouble and like you can mess up and let's just learn from it and well let's talk about that with some real examples because I think um we hear this a lot Lindsay you tell me if you I'm guessing you hear this a lot too that there are a lot of struggles with rainmakers who can't let go and let people fail forward. So what does failing forward look like on your team? Like what's a real reality of that? Well, I mean, maybe I'll start with talking about an agent on the agent side and maybe you'll talk about on the op side. Um, On the agent side, it's like a lot of failing on conversion. Mm -hmm. They're held strictly accountable to doing their job, which is Mm -hmm. to get, go out there and convert, clients to work with us. Um, and so there's been a lot of, I, I will, we will work with the agents pretty hard on getting them up to speed on conversion, a lot of trainings, which means that at times they're going to lose business. So I have to be okay with the fact that we're going to lose some business for them to learn, but then they end up being stronger because they were able to learn through it. Whereas if I just do it for them, or if I, if, if we don't give them that, that opportunity, they'll never be able, they'll never be able to shine. Um, and so I mean, sometimes it's like sitting down and saying, okay, like you have a beautiful smile. You should smile more, you know, like, like little things that will help them convert on a really like small scale. So I would say for that being willing to accept that you're not going to convert every single buyer or seller, you, you've got to let them learn how to convert through it. Well, and you know, and, and I know I want Jen to answer too, but just really quickly. So the, the conversion thing that came back to tracking for you, right? I mean, your database is like, I know you guys are crazy about it. And there are so many people that they're like, I sort of have a data, database. Oh, it's in my phone. <laughs> I'm like, so walk us through like that conversion. Like, you know, how many dials it's going to take in order to have this many conversations. And if you aren't converting somebody on that call, like we've got a conversion issue, right? Yep. Oh yeah. yeah. So we started tracking probably around, the same time you were director of ops, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That we started tracking conversion like really tight and, and like real tracking. Like, so I talk to people sometimes and they're like, well, my conversion is 90% on listings. I'm like, oh, okay. And I'm like, and I know that that's not true because I track conversion. So like the fact that no one, you can be all really great, but 90% is really hard. Okay. <laughs> um, and so I said, but do you take people out that decide not to sell? Cause that's what that means for me when they say that. And they, oh yeah, we take them out. Like if they decide not to sell, we did, cause we didn't lose that. And I'm like, but then you won't be able to predict your business next year. You're going to have people that decide not to sell. So when you take those out just to make your percentage look better, you actually are hurting your business tremendously because you don't know how, like we can predict almost to the exactly how many families we can serve. We have it down to almost a science every single year. If we generate this many leads and we talk to this many people and then we book this many appointments, like we have every metrics because we don't, we don't sugarcoat it. It is what it is. Okay. But when you know the numbers, then you can actually predict the future of your company. And so a lot of it, uh, everything is around tracking. I mean, you have to track. Yes. When you guys first started tracking, did you experience challenges with getting buy-in from people and getting them to give you the data? We make them, but yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, it hasn't been that hard to get the data because we've been, it's a, well, we it's do it public. Very, yes. Mm-hmm. And it's well, been very, what it looks like. Well, okay. So I mean, we run an ISA team. This is getting into a lot of things, but we run run an ISA team. And then of course we have our agents. Um, So like what happens is at our team meetings, Jen prints out all of the appointments that happened from the week before. Mm -hmm. And uh, we go over if they were considered an appointment, if we, if we consider them an appointment. So basically it's accountability for the ISA department and the agents. So like, the ISAs can't book fluff appointments, like non-real appointments, okay, and then hold the agents accountable to conversion, okay? So we had to define what an appointment is, which on our team, it means that both decision makers were present and that they were planning on making a move in the next six months. 
So if both decision makers were present and they were planning on making a move, so then we have accountability in the meeting with the agents. Were both decision makers present and were they planning on making a move? And then yes, that's counted as an appointment. And then we put up the scoreboard that shows each agent's conversion. Awesome. Love that. What is the scoreboard created from? Excel. Excel. Uh oh, we're freezing. That's simple. That's okay. We can still. Do it. <laughs> that is an awful picture. Oh no. <laughs> it's a fabulous picture. You know? <laughs> I have another question. Can I jump in, Lynn? Are you? Ha are you? Yep. So I don't know if this is fiction or truth, but I'm told that Sarah, that you carry a notebook that has the dreams written down of the people on your team. Is that fiction or truth? That's true. Well, I, it's so big. I can't, I don't carry it around with me, but it's in my, like, it's right here with me in my office. Um, it says dream big on it. It has everyone's dreams in it. It's a really big folder. Um, so talk to me about that. Cause I think I've never heard anyone say anything like that. And I think it's pretty cool. Well, I take it, I mean, I feel my role is to serve, like serve those that I lead. And so with that, you have to know what their dreams are to be in service to them. Um, and so I have every uh, team member's three to five year plan um, in this book. And my goal is to make it happen. So like right now, I know of two agents that in, uh, in three years, they want to move their families once their kids graduate high school to different markets. That's where they want to move to. And so we're doing, we're right now we're working on setting things up where in three years, we're going to, we're going to expand to those markets for them and for us too, obviously, but it's, it's really, it was their dream and that's where it came from was their dream. Um, and so we take it super seriously, the dreams of people on our team and making them happen. I love that. And is that part of your annual planning process where they're doing a three to five year plan or part of their onboarding? Like, where does that come from? But, uh, both. So both onboarding and uh, their three to and their every year I sit down with each person and we talk about this year and then I will confirm if the three to five year plan is still it's the um, you know like motivational interview from CV basically yep. right yep. Okay. it's all in the awesome. book I love that. Well, and you know, I know that we've got, you know, we still have some questions coming in around KPIs and 20% um, and what that looks like for you guys. And I feel like we, we walked through some of that, but can you guys walk us through, like, what does the accountability for the agents actually look like on your team? And I would imagine you guys kind of came up with that together and you're tag teaming that a little bit, but what happens like with a newer agent, if they're not hitting the goals or they're hitting the numbers, or maybe it's just ISA team that we need to talk about. And what does the action plan look like, like for that? And who's doing it out of the two of you? Or it might be your sales manager, right? Well, we're sort of double sales manager. And so mm -hmm. <laughs> we don't have, we don't have like an official, we have a, our, we lead with a team basically. Yeah. And so we each sort of have our own, and my director of growth also helps with the newer agents that are on our team. Mm -hmm. um, with accountability yes. with them. She's yeah. doing more one-on-ones with newer agents that come on, come yeah, on board. And like group trainings and just making sure that they're, they have the tools to convert and it's just helping with the trainings with them. So, but, so, so a lot comes down to like, it's hard to answer these questions without talking first about like, we really focus a lot on who we hire and making sure that we hire people that match our culture and our heart. And then like, we don't believe in really giving up on people. Yes. Like, so meaning if, if we know their heart is in the right place and they they match who the Reynolds team is, we as leaders will fight really hard to get them through wherever they need to go. Like it, it takes us, I mean, I can't even think of really who we've given up on. So like, yeah. we just don't give up on people if their heart is there. And so if you hire people that have the right heart and the right culture, then it's really easy to work with them through whatever their struggles with. So in terms of accountability, so it's not as difficult when that's. So, so I know you guys are following career visioning for hiring. Tell us what you're doing in terms of the culture match during that process. How are you ferreting out that information? So that comes a lot down to our uh, director of growth. So she was my original agent that I ever that I ever hired, and she actually 
automatically recruited about half of our team before she even was in this position. Mm -hmm. And she knows me really well and knows us very well. And so like she can, she gets to know them and their values and whether or not it's a match. She's like one of the best matchmakers basically I've ever seen. That's the best term for her almost. Um, and so she handles all of the CV process, but then also understanding whether or not they match who we are. So do you have really defined questions that dig into determining the values so you determine the values match? Yes, we do. Okay. I love that. And who came up with those? Uh, I, me and Sasha, my director of growth came up with those together. Awesome. And so, you know, I would imagine how many people do you guys think that you're meeting with to have them join the team on a regular basis? Like, what does that bench look like for you? she she meets with a lot i mean yes how yeah. many we do we do we start it with like an office tour for agents we start it with an office tour um i mean one was like how many people oh my gosh it was probably like 50 60 people like, yeah 50 like oh we get a lot of calls about joining our team pretty reg pretty regularly and so like we've sort of systematized it to where they come in and they do an office tour and then if if they after they understand what the Reynolds team is about if they want to move to the next step then we're then we sit down and start the cv process um so then the numbers for that the same way you have the numbers on your buyer and seller conversions to know how oh, many who knew? we've been doing it for a year um so we don't have it down to a science on like we do on buyers and sellers yet but we're working on it, working towards you it. Will. don't you worry yeah. <laughs> we'll get back next year and get your numbers exactly <laughs> I mean, you guys nobody i don't ever hear anybody saying that there are other agents knocking down doors to be on the team just so, i mean that is not we like we are hired to like cold call tons and tons of agents to find them for certain teams. So, I mean, do you just equate that to leadership and the culture that you're building? And I mean, that is amazing. Um, yeah, I, I didn't know that didn't happen to other people. So, I'm like, yeah. so I don't know how to answer that question. I, no, um, that's a huge thing. That is amazing. Yeah, you guys are really unique. I want to dive into more specifics. I think a lot of the things we're talking about, other people talk about, but they don't know what it means. Mm -hmm. So I know for you, I literally, it's interesting that you brought up servant leadership earlier because in my notes that I made before the call, I had a question that I wanted to ask on that. And a lot of people talk about servant leadership, but I'm not sure that people execute it and live it the way you guys do. Tell me in real life, terms what does that look like for each of you on your team these questions are hard i know <laughs> um, i think because it comes so it, it's so ingrained in you it's what you do every day but i i don't think most teams are living that way so i really want people to get a picture of what that looks like mm -hmm. so i think i mean most of our language is not we very rarely ever will talk about ourselves or what what our goals are like our goal every year comes from the te from the team like if i if i have a if i if i personally have a bigger goal than what our team wants our goal to be or what the agents on our team want our goal to be then i i will hire other agents to make that happen and i don't so it's like it's it's about them sometimes they, some years they push me like my goal might be too low and then i meet with them and what they want to accomplish and then we change it based on what they want to do so a lot of the conversation is asking really good questions uh to our team members and getting their feedback i mean we're about to do a, a survey and then on we do an on a anonymous surveys a good amount um, to get feedback because a lot of times they won't tell you to your face you know um, one time one anonymous survey um, I said rate our leadership and if there was anything that I could do to be a better leader and one of the team members mentioned that sometimes I say that I'm going to do something and then I don't do it so like meaning like I like I'll be coming into the office and they'll say, hey, can you, I just met with the seller and they would really love to talk to Sarah Reynolds. Like, do you mind calling them? And I'll say, yes, absolutely. And I'm walking into the office, right? And my intention is 100% to call them. What ends up happening is then I for, forget, right? Like, because I, I have a million other things to do. So like, but from that survey, what I took is A, I, I 
went in front of the team and I said, I, I thought this through and you guys, whoever said this, and if one person says something, there's five other people that think the same thing. Okay. So, or is it four? I can't remember what the stat is, but it's close to that. Okay. So I knew that obviously that I probably done that to other people on the team as well. So I went in front of everyone and I said, you know, this came up on the survey and I want to, first of all, apologize and want you guys to know that when I say I'm going to do something, I'm a hundred percent, I'm a woman of my, I, I'm a woman of my word, but I've let you guys down. Let me tell you how you can help ensure that something gets done. When I'm walking into the office, that's not the time to ask me to do something, you know, <laughs> because I'm not, I'm going to forget. This is yeah. the best way. Go to Lydia or go or send me an email to where I, and if that happens and it will happen. And then it, we turned it around, but being willing to like ask the hard questions, like what am I doing wrong? How can I improve as a leader? And then being willing to say, yeah, you guys are right. We messed up. Yeah. And then this is what we're going to do to change it. I don't know if I'm answering your question. I but. love that. No, that's great. I love that. That's true humility. Yes. And I think it's, it's a, you know, surveying, like we all think people freak out when I tell them they have to survey the customer, right. To like understand how you can be better and how we can get better, which I know you guys do. Um, you know, surveying your team is just, it's such a huge thing. Let me just ask you, because I know that you're setting goals based on your team's goals, which I love. If you have an agent that comes in, and they say, hey, I just want to send, I want, you know, they fit your culture and they have a great heart, but they're like, I just, I want to sell 10 homes. Like, is that a fit for your team? Or do you have a standard that you want people to hit? So, so yes, we would, if that person, like, I can think of one agent who's like, I mean, I say that they're always like, you say that about every agent. They're my absolute fave. Like, okay. <laughs> and they're like, I'm like, that's true. I, I love all of my, our people. I love them all. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But one of our, one of our agents, when she came to me, she, she had talked to Sasha originally. This was, they were doing a deal together and she had heard about the Reynolds team and was like asking questions. And then she wanted to have her second baby and then call, she called us later. So anyways, I sit down with her and she says, I have three young kids. Um, and I don't want to sell, like, I want to make 65,000. Now in our market, that's like 15, I mean, maybe 15 homes. It's probably less. Okay. For an agent. Um, so I knew that that wasn't our standard of two a month, but then as we got to know her, she a hundred percent met matched our culture. And I just, I just loved her. Like she was so Reynolds team and I'm all about supporting young moms. And I'm like, yes, come like, come join us. And I mean, now she's selling like 36 houses, but has amazing support. So she's able to be an awesome mom. And I mean, she made 65,000 in a few months, I think. But yeah. the, the point is, is yes, we will hire someone like that. Um, and, and we do have standards, but the standards a lot of times are around culture more than they are around the sales. I really is what it ends yeah. up being. So what are some examples of that? I love that, that the standards are around the culture. What would some examples of that be? So, I mean, the, the biggest one is like no, no gossip or negative talking. So I, I tell, like we, we both tell everyone that joins our team, that's the number one way you'll get fired on the Reynolds team. Yep. And that's not like a maybe, it's a like for yeah. sure. Yeah. <laughs> Have you had to do that? Oh, yes. Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, so, so if someone is talking bad about others and, you know, I mean, real estate has like a 95% fail rate. So like, I, I want our team to feel like when they walk in the Reynolds team doors, like this is a family, like almost wrapping their arms around them. It's a really hard job. Real estate is a really hard industry to be in. And the last thing we need is like negativity and gossip and we want it to be a safe place where they come and they feel like this is home and that they can really be who they are, but not be, not surround themselves with negativity. So for us, like we protect that to our core. Absolutely. I love that. That's I love awesome. that. How has your leadership changed from when you first started developing the team and the business to now for each of you? Or maybe it hasn't changed. I don't know. Has it changed? I guess is a better question. Um, I mean, I definitely have changed. I, mean, I don't think I've changed on like my approach with, you know, the success team and the agents, um, but just more with myself. I've grown and learned a lot. 
it's a hard question. Um, what are you, Jen, what do you do to enhance your growth and your learning? Like, what is that, like, nitty gritty, what does that look like? Um, I do like to try to, you know, improve, constantly improve, and how can I, you know, make this system better or improve the system, make it more efficient. So I think that is where I am growing is looking at things and trying to just make it all run smoother um, with my manage. It has, my management style has changed some. I would, I mean, just from watching her as, as a leader from my, my perspective and, and I, I, I'm like this too, and some people have said it's a, a negative, but I think it's a, a huge positive. <laughs> um, it's like, we get in with things. So like, what I mean by that is like, if we're having like transaction coordination issues, like she will go sit in their office for a week or two and like get into the system and get in and figure yeah. out what the problem is. Like, I think mm -hmm. that that, and that's growing in terms of like, that you have to grow yourself by, by stopping to do in doing that. I mean, in putting your focus on to make it better. Yeah. I mean, anytime I've had to like do a job, cause I will jump in if there is a job that needs to, you, you need help on. So I'll, I have learned so much about that job, about that position, just by going in and doing it as well. Um, and, and I actually, it's interesting, Sarah, I think you're more hands on as a leader than most leaders I know, which most people would assume is not the case when you have 70 something people on your team. Is that something that's really important to you to be hands-on? Yeah. Sometimes I don't know what everyone else is doing. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, because they say, no, they say that. And I'm like, well, what are, like, well, what, what's your job then? <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, we told you guys we were going to be real and raw on the office <laughs> podcast. <laughs> right there. <laughs> so, I mean, people have said that when they've come shadow us, it's like, wow, you get really like involved. And I'm like, well, yeah, well, yeah. Like, <laughs> so, I mean, it's, it's, yeah. it's, I tell, I mean, it's our, my name on the door. So, <laughs> um, it, and my name means something. The Reynolds name means something. So to me, it's like, we sometimes we have to get involved. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think a lot of people, you know, they disappear from their team, right? We hear that, like, the, all of a sudden, they, now it's, like, time for vacation, or it's time to go start another business, or, you know, own, a, you know, an office, or whatever, and, and they, they shift their focus, but it really, truthfully, sounds like, you know, this is, this is, you love this, and you love building it, right? And your, your focus is staying there. Yeah, I mean, I don't have, like, 15 streams of income, meaning I don't have like 15 other businesses, but I have, I have my main stream of income is like super powerful and super, a good, a good income. Yeah. <laughs> so to, in my opinion, like to me, the focus, the power of the one thing is so, is very strong in my life. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm so passionate about, I mean, a lot of opportunities have been, you know, you know, thrown my way at, you know, and, every time I come back to the office and I look around and I said, this is where I'm supposed to be at. And so until God tells me otherwise, I'm, this is where I'm, this is where you'll find me. <laughs> so. Um, Sarah, I'm going to ask you a question and you don't have to answer it if you don't want to, because no. I forgot to ask you ahead of time if it was okay to ask you this, but you posted on Facebook this week that you had a conversation with Gary Keller. Um, and at the end of it, you got to ask him a question about leadership. I think that's what it said. What was your question when, and what was his advice? Are you able to share that with us? Oh yeah, I, I'll share. Um, it wasn't a question about, I had sent him an email. Um, so we're at this like weird place on our team because we're sort of entering, like I'm a really good like copier. So I study the millionaire real estate agent book. Uh, we're in multiple, we have multiple coaching programs we're in and I just cop, like we're good implementers and copiers. But next year, our commitment is going to be probably around 1,200 families, and we run it all through like our main hub team. We have expanded, done like ink, ink blot expansion, but it's not like we're in like 12 different locations, and we're, we have one main location. And so to do to to help 1,200 families, we're probably going to have to have 40 to 50 agents. Yeah. So we're entering into an area that's like I not a lot of teams that that are running it like one team have done 1200 units um they there's a lot of teams that have but they've their expansion teams like big expansion teams 
Um, and so we're running it all, all, and these are true families. So we don't have builder accounts. We don't have like REO accounts, you know? So because of that, I feel like we're entering into like uncharted territory of like what, how our team should be structured. And so yeah, I sent them an email. Models. I'm sorry. So you're looking for new models that yes. are where we are. Yeah. And, yeah. And we're looking outside of real estate right now, like to, you know, and studying some uh, like even the military and so, like studying some other businesses to try to figure this out. Um, and it was just eye opening my conversation with Gary and Gary just said, well, we have figured this out. And I said, Oh, okay. He goes, yeah, it's called a Keller Williams market center. Right. <laughs> yeah. I knew. <laughs> and I was like, Oh, Oh, Oh. <laughs> and he, he said, so you're just a, you're a mini, market center and and because i was saying that i i thought i needed to go like almost like teams within our team like lots of different teams and i was trying to figure out how am i going to do that and he just said well so what's the current problem like meaning with your current setup and i couldn't answer that question like meaning like your leadership on your leadership team have have each has each leader re reached their lid like are they coming to you saying we need to do this hmm. and i said well no and he said, okay, <laughs> so what you need to do is, and then he started talking to me about how the, how a Keller Williams office is supposed to run, how you manage those agents um, is by like training calendar management versus like one-on-one -on -one management. Um, and so making sure you have a really tight training calendar. So it was, it was just a really, it was 10 minutes, but I wrote a page full of notes and it was very like exactly what I needed to hear. And I have so much clarity after that conversation. So. I love that. Yeah. That sounds fun too. Jen, I'm listening to that going, oh, on the ops side, that's fun to implement. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Lots of fun. Well, and you know, I, we're, we're rounding out to the end of the hour here and we've so appreciated you guys um, answering, you know, being super raw and being honest and authentic, which is just exactly who you guys are. And that's why you're attracting so many people. Um, I know I, we probably have a million more questions, but I'm going to ask one last one and then I'll let Christy, um, take it home. But, you know, if, if there was one thing that you could both say to all the people that are watching this, um, that are trying to grow teams and are, you know, there, there's a lot of people that are doing it the total opposite, right? It's the, Hey, this is my goal. This is where I want to hit. And I'm going to get agents to do those things. And everybody on the team, they have to have, there's this standard and this is what they're going to do. And it really has kind of become not about them. It's more about the person who's leading. If there's one thing that you could kind of, um, maybe advise or like give advice around, like, I know you guys have done this in five years and I think it's, it's happened the way it has and it's grown the way it has because of your servant leadership and who you guys are for those people and the fact that it's their goals that, that you care about and are pushing them towards their goals and their dreams and that's what matters and everybody's gravitating towards that. Um, so this is a long winded question, but like if there was one thing that you could say, gosh, you know, the moment we did this or the moment that we like let go of the like, it's all about me and it's all about them, you know, what would you say that might be and how would you, you know, maybe tell somebody, hey, it's all about them. How do you tell people about that? Does that make sense? Yeah, I mean, I think, I'm gonna answer with what, what I think. Yeah. <laughs> um, so there's, so there's so many distractions in real estate. Like it, it's, it can get really hard because there's so many different things doing different ways. And I'm just a big believer in like following models and systems that are proven. And so like, I'm a big believer in following the original MREA, which is you hire when you have an overflow of leads. Mm -hmm. And I, I think the big mistake that I'm seeing time and time and time and time and time and time and time again is people hiring when they don't have an overflow of leads. And that servant leadership, in my opinion, again, comes from showing value. And in real estate, a lot of it has to do with leads. Mm -hmm. And I know that's not necessarily the like, fun answer or the sexy answer or whatever, but it's, it's really what the millionaire real estate agent book was built around, which is you hire when you have an overflow of leads. So if you don't become a master of that first, before you start building and hiring. And it's like when, uh, I think I've heard Christy say this a few times, like to have a director of ops, you have to have ops to directors. Wait, what, 
I can't remember what you yeah, said. But I have operations to direct. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like to have a team, like in my opinion, you have to have buyers and sellers to serve. So, to, or like you can't really, anyway. So I'm just a big believer in that. So I would say that that's the one thing that I'm seeing a lot of people make mistakes on. And what we've done, I think, really well is that we always hire when we have an overflow of leads. And if we don't have an overflow of leads, we don't hire. Like, like if someone comes to me and says they, their commitment, their goal is to help 30 families. If I don't see that we can make that happen for them, we won't hire them. Mm. And so that's how serious we take it. So. Yeah. Well, I'm also understanding the importance of every lead, um, like getting your systems down um, and not losing leads. Like yes. it's crazy how many teams are losing so much leads that they worked hard to get and they spent a lot of money to get and that they're just, you know, dropping the ball and the, you just have to have your systems down where you're maximizing the most out of every lead. Yeah, yeah I love that. Gary always says it's you either have a lead problem or a conversion problem, which is it? And that's exactly what you just said, mm. uh, dialing in both of those things. I'm actually going to thank you guys for coming on. And I have a million more questions, but we're over time. And I know that um, Lydia is probably going, you guys need to be on your next call. But I want to um, ask, th first of all, thank you guys so much for giving us your time. Uh, we really, really appreciate your leadership in the industry and also outside the industry. And then Lindsay, next week, you want to tell us who we have coming on uh, the podcast? Yes, we have Rock Thomas, who is the owner of KWs in Canada, um, also was a large agent there, has started the M1 movement, which is uh, the March to the Million, and is creating whole life millionaires, um, which is not just about money, it's about diet and all kinds of other things. Um, and then his uh, number two, which is Ken Eslick. So that's going to be a really exciting, it's a different business, a totally different model um, outside of real estate. So we're really excited to dive in with them. And thank you so much, Jen and Sarah. We've just so appreciated getting to hear all this. We're, we're very thankful for you. We're, we are so thankful for, for you guys and you, your leadership in the industry is huge as well. And we respect you both so, so much. Thank you. All right. Have a great day, guys. See you guys next Bye. week. You too. All right. So I took this on live here. <laughs> thank you guys so much. Thank you, guys. thank you so much. It's bum a bum that you guys froze, but it was know, awesome. But, <laughs> but we still sat looking really good. <laughs> we <laughs> you like, yeah, we yeah, so, yeah. I realized like towards the end, like, oh, we could have been like totally goofing off. And no that was awesome. <laughs> We're sorry we threw some some others at you, but we just there's so much that you guys are doing. We respect you so much. So oh, you too. Awesome. <laughs> All right, have a great week, you guys, or weekend. Okay, bye. Bye. bye.